Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets. In this video, we are going to see how to containerize a .NET Core application with a SQL Server database. So we need to create two containers, one for the .NET Core application and another one for SQL Server. We'll be adding the container orchestrator support for our project and make use of Docker Compose to deploy the application with all the Docker images needed. Before starting, you should know a few things. This video is part of a series named Microservice Architecture. You can find the playlist link in the video description to watch the other videos in this series. In the last video, we have seen how to create and deploy a single container application. The main intention of this video is to make you understand how to create and deploy multi-container applications. It is very important to understand the concept as in the upcoming videos, we'll be creating multiple microservice applications which we need to containerize and deploy in the same way. So let's get started. This is a simple project which we are going to containerize and deploy. The process is same for any .NET Core application. For this example, I have created a .NET Core Blazor project. If you are interested in learning Blazor development, you can find the playlist named Blazor Tutorial in our channel. I'll just show you the application first by running it. It is a simple application in which we can create multiple users. As you can see, there are two tabs. In the first tab, we'll be listing the added user details and in the second tab, we are having the option to add a new user. Let me add a user by providing the values. Now that user is listed under the first tab. I'm adding one more user. Now the new user is also listed here. We also have a trash icon here which will delete the user record from the database. This application saves data in a SQL Server database. In this project, I have used Entity Framework Core to read and write data to the database. In order to use Entity Framework Core in the project, we have to install Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Design, then Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools and Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server libraries from the NuGet packages. Here you can see the packages installed for this project. This is the database context class which inherits from DB context class of Entity Framework. In the constructor, you can see that I have created an object of database creator and using that object, I am creating database if it doesn't exist. Also, the same object can create tables in the database if no tables exist. This method will do the database and table creation while we run the application for the first time. Below that method, I have declared dbset for user entity. Now, moving to the program.cs class, you can see the dependency injection made for the database contacts class here. Here you can see the connection string. In the connection string, db host, db name, and db password are fetched from other variables. It is because while containerizing, we'll be using environment variables here. I will show you soon how to do that. Now in the users.razor file, you can see a method named fetch data which will fetch users from the database. Also here you can see a delete user method which will delete the user from the database. In the add user razor file, we have the method to save the user to the database. So that's it in our application, it's a simple one. Now let's see how we can add container orchestrator support for our project. For that, right click on the project in Solution Explorer, then go to add option. There you can find a menu option named container orchestrator support. Once you select that, Visual Studio will ask for the container orchestrator. We can choose Docker Compose here and click OK. Then Visual Studio will ask for the container operating system we need. I prefer to use Linux. Now this will add a Docker file in our project and it will also create a Docker Compose project in our solution. 
Visual Studio allows us to debug the application using Docker Compose. As we have seen in the last video, now Visual Studio will download all the needed images for creating the debug Docker container. Now let's have a look on the newly created Docker file. It is the same kind of Docker file which we have seen in the last video. Here is the expose instruction to expose the port number 80. Now let's open the docker-compose YAML file. Under the services section, there is only one service with the name demo blazor server app. Docker Compose will create only a single container with this docker compose YAML file, but we need to create a SQL server container as well. So we must modify this YAML file as per our need. First, let me provide a container name for this demo blazor server app. Let it be demo blazor app. Then let's provide a port mapping to map the port number 8001 of the host machine with port number 80 of the container so that we can access the application using 8001 from the host machine. We have already seen that the docker file is exposing port number 80. Now let me create one more service for SQL Server. Let the service name be demo app db. I am providing a friendly name for this container as well. Let it be app-db. Next, we can provide the image details. Let's have a look on the SQL Server image in Docker Hub. You can just search for SQL Server in Docker Hub and you can find the Docker image by just scrolling down. Here it is mentioned that this is the official image for Microsoft SQL Server on Linux for Docker Engine. Let me click on that. Here you can see different tags for different versions of SQL Server, 2019-latest, then 2017-latest, etc. In the section below, you can find the image name mcr.microsoft.com slash sql slash server. So let us provide the image details now. I am copying the image name from the documentation. After that, put a colon and we need to provide the tag which we need to use. Let's use 2019-latest which is the latest version available while I am recording this video. Next, I can assign a port mapping but this is optional. You can do this if you need to access the database from the host machine. I am assigning port number 80024 port 1433 which is the default port number for SQL Server so that I can open the database using 8002 from the host machine. Next, we can assign some environment variables for the SQL Server Docker container. In the documentation itself, you can find the environment variables that we can use. First one is accept end user license agreement equals y. So let me provide that. Then the second one is sa underscore password to assign the system administrator password. Here you can provide the password you need. Let me provide a password which I need to assign. Now let us add the demo blazor server app depends on the demo app db so that Docker will start the database container before the application container. Next, let's provide some environment variables for our application container. I need the application to generate a connection string based on the environment variable values we provide. First, let me create a variable named db underscore host. So demo app db is the database host. Then db underscore name I need the application to create and use the database with the name what I provide here. So let the name be demo blazor app. Next, db underscore sa underscore password. Here we need to provide the same password what we have assigned in the database container. Now we need to make changes in our application to read the values from the environment variables and use them in the connection string. So in the program.cs class, I can call the environment.getEnvironmentVariable method to fetch the value. db underscore host is the environment variable name for the database host. Now I can copy the same method and change the environment variable names. db underscore name for database name, db underscore sa password for the password, 
So now the connection string will use the values from the environment variables. Next important thing what I need to discuss is about networks in Docker. We can place multiple containers in the same network if they need to communicate each other. So let me show you some basics of Docker networking. While creating a Docker network, we can specify the network driver we need to use. Let's see the available network drivers in Docker. Bridge driver. This is the default network driver. If you don't specify a driver, this is the type of network you are creating. Bridge networks are usually used when your application run in standalone containers that need to communicate. Host driver. If you use the host network driver for a container, that container's network stack is not isolated from the Docker host. The container shares the host's networking namespace and the container does not get its own IP address allocated. Overlay driver. The overlay network driver creates a distributed network among multiple Docker hosts. IP VLAN driver. The IP VLAN driver gives users total control over both IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. MAC VLAN driver. MAC VLAN networks allow you to assign a MAC address to a container, making it appear as a physical device on your network. The Docker will route traffic to containers by using their MAC address. None. Used if you want to completely disable the networking stack on a container. Just assume that we have a solution with one web application and one web API. The web application should not communicate directly to the database. We need the communication to happen through web API. Here, web API is the only application that need direct access to the database. So for this solution, we should create two networks. Let's name it as frontend and backend. In frontend network, we can add web application and web API so that they can communicate each other. In the backend network, we can add web API and the database so they can also communicate each other. Here, the web API container is having two networks, both frontend and backend. If we establish the network connectivity like this, the web application Docker container cannot even access the database Docker container because they don't have any network connectivity. Hope you got a brief idea about Docker networking. We'll be using different types of networks in our upcoming videos. So coming back to our Docker Compose file, let me create a new network under Networks section. I'll name the network as Demo Blazor App. You can provide whatever name you need. Here, I'm not providing any network driver. So by default, Docker will use bridge driver for this network. Now let us add the database docker container under the new network. Also we can add the application docker container under the same network. Now let's run the application using docker compose. So Visual Studio will create containers according to our docker compose file and run it. Let's see the application is working as expected. So the application is loaded in the browser. Let's try to add a user. The user got successfully created. You can see the user is in the list. That means the application can access the database container and do the read and write operations. Let me minimize the browser and Let's have a look on the environment variables of each containers in the container window. So you can see the app-db container is having the environment variables which we have assigned. The application container is also showing the values we assigned for the environment variables. In my Docker desktop, you can see the containers created by Visual Studio for debugging. The Docker images are also listed here. Next. I need to show you how to deploy this application in a different machine. Just before that, let me publish this application to Docker Hub so that we can use the Docker image directly from the Docker Hub while deployment. So choosing the Docker container registry as the target and Docker Hub as the specific target. 
then providing the credentials to access Docker Hub repository. The process got started, it will build our application and push the image to Docker Hub repository. I am skipping these steps as we have already discussed this process in detail in the last video. The process got completed, let me open Docker repositories in browser and you can see the newly created public repository. Let me click on that and you can see the tag assigned for Docker image is the latest tag. We can see more information of the Docker image in the Tags tab. So now let's deploy this application using Docker Compose. For that, you must have Docker Compose installed in your machine. Docker Desktop for Windows includes Docker Compose along with it, so you don't need to install it separately. To install Docker Compose, you can visit docs.docker.com slash compose slash install page and you can find the options to install docker compose here you can find different tabs for mac windows windows server linux etc the project is uploaded in our github repository you can access it using the url github.com slash coding droplets in the repositories tab you can find a project named demo blazer server app with docker compose Inside that, we have project files including the docker compose file, so let me open that. The content is same as we have seen before. Let me copy the file content and paste it in notepad. You can use any text editor. Just follow the same procedure if you need to test by deploying this application in your machine. You can also access the docker image as it is a public image. The demo app db service section or the database section is fine. We don't need to make any changes there. Let's move to the application service section. Here we can replace with the name of the image in Docker Hub. Also we don't need the build section as the Docker image in Docker Hub is already compiled and ready to use image. That's it. Now let me save the file. I have a folder named demo-blazer-app in my C drive. I am saving this file to that folder. Let me name the file as docker-compose.yml. Next, I am opening command prompt to run the docker compose command. Just before that, let me execute docker ps-a command and you can see there are no docker containers in this machine. Also, there are no docker images. So let me move to the folder named demo blazer app. Now here I can provide docker-compose up-d up is the docker compose parameter or keyword to pull the needed images and start the container now you can see the docker compose is pulling two images one is our application's image and the second one is the sql server image here the important point what you need to understand is if you have published the application to a public or private repository you only need this docker compose file to deploy the entire application in a new machine. In the new machine, we don't need to install .NET Runtime or SQL Server Database or any other dependencies and libraries. The only thing we need is the docker and docker compose to be installed in that machine. Once the images are downloaded, docker compose will create the network and the containers. Then start the containers. Now let's see the running containers using docker ps command and you can see both the containers are running. Also let me list the images using docker images command and you can see the downloaded images. I'll show you in docker desktop as well. Here you can see the containers. In the images section you can see the images as well. Now let's run the application in browser. So let me open localhost colon 8001 in a new tab. The application has been loaded successfully. Let's check whether the database communication is happening. We can try by creating a user and listing it. Also, I am able to delete the user, so the application is working fine. Now I will show you one more thing. We can use Docker Compose to stop and remove the containers and related networks. From the same folder, which is having the docker-compose.yml file, we can just provide 
docker-compose down command. Now you can see that the containers and the network got removed. There are no containers now in my docker desktop, but the images will not get deleted. Hope you are clear with docker compose. So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Please subscribe, like and share this video. See you all in the next video. Thank you.